foreign officials not to use the name Rohingya, activists and UN officials have reported. This is part of a long-standing discrimination against the Rohingya minority who have been denied citizenship and targeted in sectarian violence. Here's Sarah Say with more. How can the rights of a group be protected when you're not allowed to use their name? That's the question that Tun King, the president of the UK Burmese Rohingya organisation, asked when referring to Myanmar's government's attempts at pressuring aid workers and foreign officials not to use the name Rohingya. Kin said that by not using the name Rohingya, governments would be cooperating with the policy of repression. Myanmar's oppressed Rohingya Muslims have been denied citizenship, targeted in deadly sectarian violence and corralled into dirty camps without aid. The Rohingyas are seen as illegal immigrants from Bangladesh and not as one of the officially recognised ethnic groups, although the 1.3 million Rohingyas claim they originate from the Rakhine state in Myanmar. Long-standing discrimination against the stateless minority has intensified as Myanmar has opened up after decades of military rule. More than 140,000 Rohingyas have been trapped in crowded camps since violent mobs from the Buddhist majority began chasing them from their homes in Rakhine two years ago, killing up to 280 people. The UN has stated that the number of severe malnutrition cases among the Rohingya has more than doubled between March and June this year. Human rights envoy Yanki Lee also said that she had been repeatedly told by the government not to use the name Rohingya, although she noted under international law that minorities have the right to self-identify. But Myanmar's information minister, Yi Hutut, has said that the name Rohingya had never been accepted by Myanmar citizens, and last April the Rohingya were excluded from the UN-supported national census if they insisted on identifying themselves as Rohingya. Due to the contention surrounding the name, UN officials say that they avoid using the name Rohingya in public to avoid stirring tensions between the country's Buddhists and Muslims. And in a visit earlier this month, US Secretary of State John Kerry attempted to remain neutral by not using the term Rohingya or the Myanmar government's preferred Bengali to refer to the minority groups when he talked about the situation in the Rakhine state. But while remaining neutral may be necessary to uphold diplomatic relations on both sides, the consequences for the Rohingyas fighting for their recognition is likely to be significantly negative. Sarah Say, The Report. Well, joining me in the studio to tell us more are Tun Kin, President of the Burmese Rohingya Organisation UK, and Mark Fermanagh, who's Director of the Burma Campaign UK. Welcome to you both. Tun, Sarah quoted you at the beginning of that, uh, of that report, um, but isn't it true that the, the Burmese government seem to have got what they wanted here if UN officials aren't using the term, if John Kerry's avoiding it? Yeah, well, uh, they are not using it as far as what we see recent months. Uh, it's very surprising they are actually, it's a kind of like cooperating the repression with the governments. That's the policy they are uh, coordinating with Burmese government as far as what we have to say. And how can the rights of the Rohingya can be protected if the, these people, they are not using the word Rohingya even. It's quite shocking. Uh, it is very, very, you know, uh, we are very, very upset. You are disappointed to see that, honestly. Mark, uh, what's the kind of mindset of the government here? Because to you know, outside observers or people hearing this for the first time, will we'll say this is bonkers. You know, that if a group of people say this is what we are, and the government says you can't use this term, I mean, try and unpack what the government's thinking here for us. For the British government, what they're thinking about mainly is trade. I mean, we've seen today that another British company has secured a contract from the British government. That's, that's clearly in the last three years since the so-called reform process began. That's where their priorities lie. And particularly the British government, where they're trying to compete with so many other countries rushing in now to invest in Burma, where they think they've got a unique selling point is by winning contracts from the Burmese government itself rather than just general investment contracts. And that means being very close to the Burmese government and not upsetting them. Okay, so that's, so that's, the, that's the British government's mm. angle. But, but how, have the, how, has, how has the Burmese state got itself to this point where it, it, it's, it's doing something as, as crazy looking as this? Well, it's, it's pure prejudice. I mean, the, 
the Burmese government is, is it doesn't like Rohingya Muslims, it doesn't like any Muslims at all. In fact, it doesn't like almost anybody that it considers to be foreign and not what they would describe as indigenous to Burma. So, so you, you've seen that the, the prejudice and the violence against the Rohingya Muslims spread last year to other Muslims who, who were not Rohingya. You've seen laws that originally targeting Muslims which will discriminate against Muslims are now going to include discriminating against Christians. So, I mean, it, it's a very nationalist, extreme nationalist government that, that is pursuing these policies. And I think what was very worrying is how the response of the international community is to back down and rather than confront and say this is unacceptable. Three years ago, UN officials and, and governments were using Rohingya without any concern at all. Now, because the Burmese government is kicking up more of a fuss about it, they've started stopping using the word. But that's not neutrality. Mm. Neutrality is to use the word of a, a race. They're, a, they're an ethnic group there. They've been accepted for decades. That, that's a, a pure fact. So by, by backing down to this bullying and aggressive behavior by the Burmese government, they are taking the side of the Burmese government. It's not a neutral position. So, I, mean, I mean, it's bad enough, the language question, but uh, I mean, the, the reality is, is worse still, isn't it? I mean, there are estimates of, what, 150,000 Rohingya in, the, in those camps that we saw on the VT? Well, uh, there is about more than 150,000 IDPs since 2012 ethnic cleansing against Ro Rohingya, which was, uh, you know, uh, involved by security forces and Rakhine Buddhist extremists there. And uh, still the situation is getting much, uh, situation not improving, getting much worse. And last year, this year, March, I, uh, MSF was kicked off and malnutrition is double up, according to UN. And children are dying and, you know, like a uh, movement inside the camps are very serious. They cannot get aid, they cannot move from one place, uh, they cannot move from within the IDP camps. And so there's people are even outside of the camps, other parts of the Arkan, people are living like a kind of siege. They cannot go to the clinic they cannot get food, they cannot go to see their rel relatives at all. So the situation is nothing improved and no progress is getting much worse to the IDP and other parts of the Arkan state to the Rohingyas. Mark, are, are, are we just waiting in this, in, in this kind of um, atmosphere? Are we just waiting for a, an, another violent attack on the Rohingya, do you think? I think that's inevitable. I think there's, there's clearly a downward spiral and the international community are, are not willing to face up to it. When they are confronted with the uncomfortable facts on the ground, we see like when John Kerry visited Burma, he was, um, he's talking about the sort of the long road to transition and there'll be difficulties. The British government described them as bumps in the road. But I mean, what, what you've got is evidence from Human Rights Watch of, of ethnic cleansing against the Rohingya. I don't think you can just dismiss ethnic cleansing as a bump in the road to transition. It's, it's too serious for that. And, but the, the problem is that there, there doesn't appear to be any government who's willing to take a lead, to speak out on behalf of the Rohingya, to mobilize at the United Nations and on the international platforms to, to try and support and put pressure on the Burmese government to change its policies. And there's there's no one that's out there speaking up for them internationally. And is this true even of, uh, of the governments in Muslim countries? Uh, yeah, especially. I mean, traditionally, a lot of the, the governments in Muslim countries were closer to the Burmese government you know, the military government, um, despite what it was doing to the Rohingya. And while in 2012 we started to see the OIC and others um, start to mobilize um, in support of the Rohingya, they very quickly fell silent again. And we're hearing now there's been an annual resolution on Burma and human rights at the UN General Assembly since 1991. It looks like this will be the first year that there won't be a resolution. The EU drafts it, and this year there, it looks like they'll decide not to. There were hopes the OIC might step in and draft one instead. Doesn't look like they're interested in doing that. So this is a signal that's going to go to the Burmese government that even while it's increasing repression, while children are dying because of humanitarian aid restrictions, you know, despite everything that it's doing against the Rohingya, the international community is going to drop for the first time in more than 20 years, this very important resolution. Mm. Uh, and and is, the, is the situation with the opposition, the internal opposition to the Burmese government, disappointing as well? I mean, Aung San Suu Kyi has been silent-ish, I, I, I guess would be one way of putting it. 
Well, uh, as far as what we can see, she is not speaking up, unfortunately, even though we have supported NLD for a long time since 1990 elections, where NLD won lands like victory. So our Rohingya parties were alliance with her party. But unfortunately, she is not speaking up. That is really, really upsetting to the Rohingyas. Uh, what we would like to see is, uh, as a human being, uh, as a wh human being, the Rohingyas are at least human beings. She should speak up what's happening to the Ro Rohingyas. That's what we can see. Okay, well, I mean, that might be a grim picture, but we'll be monitoring any further developments. Thank you to, your bo to you both for your comments.